Okay. So today, um, I actually named this in our notes day 25 and day 26, because I actually would split this into two days, just so you know, that's why you'll see it like that. But of course, we're still in chapter 14. We're still looking at multiple linear regression. And today we're going to talk about building a better model. And we're going to look at um, what we call the backward elimination. So this is to build a better model. So um, I'm just going to say, and backward elimination. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Okay. So I want you to think about what we've been doing so far these last few weeks with multiple linear regression. We've been looking at a Y response variable and multiple predictors. And then last class, we included a predictor that wasn't numerical, but it was categorical with two levels, like a yes, no, or I believe in our example, we used gender, male, female, something like that. So it has two ways of answering that question basically is what we're looking at when I say two levels and we recoded it so it looks numerical to Minitab okay so that's where we're at that's what we've been doing um, and we we look at these models and sometimes they're not great right sometimes we find that a linear model is not valid or we find we have predictors that are not significant meaning they're not useful so what we want to do today is we want to build a better model and we actually want to build the best model we can. And we do that by building a better model and then we use what we call backwards elimination um, to make the model the best it can, meaning we have significant predictors. Okay? So I want to talk to you first about this, the complete second order model. So the complete second order model is what a complete model would actually look like for what we're looking at here when we talk about multiple linear regression. So if it was built with two predictor variables, um, it would have more than just the two first order terms. So I'm just gonna write that down. So if it was built, with two predictors, then the model would have more than the two first order terms. So let's talk about what that is and what that looks like. So we talked about this before when we started multiple linear regression. So I had my, my equation yi equals b naught or beta naught. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that that's my y-intercept, right? Plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2, right? And we would have one of these terms for every predictor. So if we had two predictors, like I'm talking about here, if we had two predictors, the, the full complete second order model would not actually just have those terms. It would have more terms than just these two because these are just first order, right? Like it's X to the power of one. So it would have more than that. So these are what we call our linear terms. Then it would have these other terms. So it would have something like beta three x1 squared plus, I said three and I wrote two, beta four x2 squared. And these would be my quadratic terms, right? x squared is just my quadratic. Then it would also have another term, which would be 
beta five, and it would be the interaction between my two predictors, X1 and X2. And we saw this when we, when we were looking at ANOVAs back in numerical data, where we added a term, X1 times X2, to my interaction term. And then of course, we have our error term, our epsilon. It's gonna stick in there. So this right here is what we call our interaction term. This is our full second order model. So what we've been working with is just the linear terms, right? That's all we've been doing so far. So today I wanna to show you how to build, maybe not a complete second order model, but I wanna show you how to add some of these terms to our model if we wish to do so. And then we see if we have a better model. So a lot of times when we add like the interaction term or one of the quadratic terms or both of them are, are all of these, then we will have a better model than what we started with, with just the linear terms, okay? So I wanna show you that today, how to add those, how to build those and how to see, right? How to tell if the model is better and then how to work our way backwards to, to eliminate terms or predictors that are not useful, they're not uh, significant, okay? So let's just talk about this a little bit. So our second order model is a model having all terms and it makes it a complete model, okay? So having all terms, makes the model a complete model. So this right here would be a complete model for, I don't, okay, there we go. Sorry, straighten that out. For a model with two predictors, okay? All right. So the number of predictors actually dictate how many terms we have, right? This is how big the model is. If I only have two predictors, imagine if I have a third predictor, first of all, it's gonna add a third linear term, then it's gonna add another quadratic term. And then all of a sudden now I have a couple more interaction terms, right? So the, the number of predictors definitely dictate how many terms I have. in that complete model, okay? And I want you to know we're not going to build complete models today, but we're going to in build what we call like a partial model. So we're gonna build partial models. So meaning we're going to have maybe a quadratic term, maybe an interaction term, or a couple of those added terms, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm not gonna have you put all of these terms in because we could just see how long it gets and how, how big it gets really fast. Um, and so we're, going to, we're not gonna build complete models, but we're gonna build what we call partial models and we're going to scale them down to good models. So we want to make this model better, okay? Now I need to also mention this, this is very important here. So if a quadratic term, so if I have this quadratic term or an interaction term,
if it's in the model, then the linear term must remain in the model. So this is what we call, let's move this up, the hierarchy um, rules. And it's kind of like a requirement. Um, and it's nothing you're gonna do a write-up for, for me or anything. It's just something we're going to actually um, just make sure it's there. So what I mean by this is that when I'm looking at my full model, I'm not maybe going to have a full model, but maybe I'm going to have like one of the quadratic terms. Okay, maybe I, maybe I won't have these others. Maybe I'm going to have one of these quadratic terms, and it's it's x one squared. So it's my first predictor being squared. So if this term is in my model, then I must keep my regular first predictor linear term in the model. Okay. So when we're building a better model and we're, we're scaling it back, we're removing terms. That means I will not be able to remove this predictor term if this quadratic term is in, in the model. Same thing with like, maybe I don't, and we're gonna see this in the example today, we're going to have interaction terms. So I have X1, X2. So if I wanna scale my model down, the only way I'd be able to do it is by taking this term out because if it's my interaction term, I can't take out either one of these because the linear term is in this. So I have to keep it in the model. So we're gonna see how this works. We're gonna add more than just one interaction term and you know, kind of just get an idea of what's going on and what it looks like, okay? So this is our building a better model. We're not gonna do a full second order model but we're going to do what we call like a partial, okay? I'll tell you what terms to add. You're not going to determine what to add. I will tell you what to add, okay? I want you to know what we're doing today, Minitab can do for us. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do this in our example. We're gonna do it by hand and then Minitab will, um, can do it for us. So I can have Minitab just go ahead and do it. So what's nice about doing it, and when I say by hand, it just means step-by-step step ourselves. Um, when we do it that way, it's nice. You can see it, it, everything that's going on and you really get a great understanding. When Minitab does it, it just does it all at once. And then you don't really know what happened in between. I mean, you can go back and look, but it's nice to see how to do it yourself, okay? So let's talk about building a better model and how we're going to do this. So for building a better model, we're going to build either a full or partial model. And we're going to scale it back. to a model with only significant predictors. So if a predictor is not significant, then why do I want it in my model, right? That means it's not useful. So we're going to take them out. So we're going to build a model and make it the best model we possibly can by only including significant predictors in the model. Okay. What we're hoping to see here, okay, so we hope to see, this is important, our S, remember what this is, this is our standard error decrease. So I'm just saying S because that's what it is in Minitab, right, in Minitab. I'm hoping to see my standard error decrease. That's a good thing, okay? But then I'm also hope to see my R squared adjusted, right? Because it's multilinear regression, increase. And that's a good thing. 
because that means we're reducing the air. We're, we're reducing those residuals if this is increasing. That's a good thing. So we hope to see both of these take place. Okay. So the best model, I'm just going to write this. only has significant predictors. And has a small, I'm gonna say smaller standard error and larger R squared adjusted. So that's what we're looking to do. Okay. So let's talk about how we're going to do this, right? So the process that we're going to use here. Now, you're going to notice um, we're not going to really do like some testing write-ups. We're going to really look more like at a p-value and just make a statement about it kind of thing when we're, when we're doing this. So um, our model building procedure So we're going to start with a full model or partial model here for us. Okay. Then we're, our very first step here is we're going to find, after we've built our model, find the predictor with the largest p-value. And I'm gonna say that can be removed. And the reason I'm saying that can be removed because remember what I mentioned before that we can't remove a term the, a linear term if it's part of a quadratic or an interaction term. So we have to keep that in mind. And I'll, I'll write that down here. Maybe I'll write like a little asterisk here and then I'll write it down, down below. Um, so we're going to find the predictor with the largest p-value that can be removed and we're going to remove it. I'm gonna show you how to do all this when we look at an example. And I'll just write my little asterisk. So um, cannot be part of a quadratic or interaction term. Just as our little side note, okay? That's how we know. Then for our step two, we're going to rerun or rebuild the model after we removed this insignificant predictor, right? The most insignificant, so the one with the largest p-value, okay? Uh, so we're gonna rerun the model and repeat step one until all predictors p-values are less than alpha. And we're going to set, I'm sorry, I'm off the page. We're going to set our alpha a little higher here. I'm going to say alpha is equal to 0.15. I know we always use an alpha of 0 0.05 for significance, but what I want you to think about is 0 0.05 is really low, right? So that's pretty strict. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up a little bit and just lighten up on this and make it a 0.15. Okay, so a 15% significance to say that it's significant and that it's a good predictor, okay? So we're gonna keep doing this process. We're gonna keep running step one until all my predictors have a p-value that are less than 0.15, okay? 
So that's what our that's going to be our process today. That's what we're going to do. So when I um, and like I mentioned, Minitab can do this for us. I'm going to show you when we work through an example together how Minitab does this for us, and we will compare it to what we did, and we can kind of look at the output and see what it looks like. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at example one on page. Five, I believe. I may be wrong on the page. I did not confirm that. But example one on page five, we want to take a look at. So we're on day 25, 26. If you want to download the notes, feel free to do that. Or if you want to just follow along and watch, that's fine. The data is out there. Um, I think it's called automobile uh, miles per gallon data for that day five, day 26. Okay, so that's not, this is our daily. So this is not the right screen. I'm sorry, wrong one. Okay, here it is. Okay, um, I'm sorry, it's page seven. I was really off on that one. Page seven. I'm going to change that on my paper right now. So I have it. Okay. So the gas mileage um, data is out there. Feel free to download it and work through this with me if you want. Okay. So researchers interested in developing a model that describes the gas mileage measured in miles per gallon of automobiles. So based on the input from an engineer, she decides that the predictor variables might be engine size curb weight, horsepower, and if the automobile is two-wheel or four-wheel drive. Now, that two-wheel, four-wheel drive is going to be our categorical variable, so we need to recode it. And I actually have it, so it actually has two-wheel and four-wheel drive for us today, so I can show you how to recode in case we need to do that in the future. Um, I probably won't really ask you to do that often, but it's nice just to show you, right? So we have a random sample of 13 automobiles obtained. And so here it says, you know, to produce the matrix plot, the correlation matrix, so all the same stuff we've been doing, right? And we want to, um, we want to talk about, I'm gonna take this out because we're not doing that. Um, you know, what we see from the matrix plot and the correlation values, we always just talk about that strongest relationship. And we wanna know if there's a difference between here in this case, the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive, right? So we're just gonna talk about those just like last class. So nothing new there. Now in question four, it says to build the model with the four predictors. So I'm gonna call it model one. This is gonna be like our normal multiple linear regression model that we've been doing all this week and last week. So nothing new on question number four. Now, and, and it just says, um, we don't need to have a test write up, just look at the P value. So remember it goes with my F test statistic and my ANOVA. And I want to know, is the model useful? Is it statistically useful? So I'm looking for that p-value to be less than 0.05. In question five, it says to build the model with the original four predictors and the two interaction terms of curb weight times horsepower and engine size type times horsepower. So now here I'm going to start building a bigger model. Um, I'm hoping that having those interaction terms might explain some of what's going on in my model and explain some of those residuals and move that error from the error into explain, um, which is a good thing because that will lower, or I'm sorry, increase my R squared, okay? And then that should lower my standard error. We're gonna call this model two and we just wanna know, is it significant? So here I say, um, you know, that we're gonna do a little short and test process and model utility, you know what that is. That's when I'm, you know, recognizing my betas are all zero, one's not zero, that quick short process. <clears throat> Sorry, I got to take it. Okay, now in step seven, um, we want to know if there's any predictors that are significant. Okay, and we're just gonna name them. Then in question eight, it says, reduce the model manually. Okay, so we're gonna do it step by step. And we're gonna call the final model, call this reduced model, final model. Now, the way we reduce is what we talked about in class. 
We're going to look at the predictors. We're going to remove the largest p-value. So the predictor with the largest p-value, this is from my coefficient section. I'm going to remove it, build the model again. So I'm going to run the model without that term in it. I'm gonna keep doing that over and over again until all of my predictors are significant with the p-value that's less than 0.15, okay. So then I just want you to look at the standard error and R squared adjusted and kind of look at that. So that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna show you how Minitab can do it for us, okay? And you're gonna do that in, on your daily. So let's go over to Minitab. I already brought my Minitab in. So here's the Minitab. I have no idea why I have column one empty. It just is. Um, it's not really a big deal. But we can see column six has the two wheel drive and four wheel drive, right? And I don't want it like that. That's text. See how it says column C um, dash T? That means it's text. It's not numerical. I need it to be numerical so I can put it in my model appropriately. So what I want to do here, I need to recode. So I'm going to do that first and just get it done with. So I'm going to go and start up here at data. And under data, almost down to the bottom, like two thirds of the way down, I see it says recode. Just hovering over recode, you have different options. I'm going to choose the top option, which says numeric. So I wanna take that categorical and change it to numeric and we're gonna do zeros and ones. Okay. So here we can see that we have the, up here, recode values. So which ones do I wanna recode? It's the two wheel drive, four wheel drive columns. I'm gonna double click on that or, or click on it and select to bring it over. Now my method here, I'm going to recode individual values. So it's the very top option. Now here it just automatically tries to assign it to something, but we're going to change it. So the two wheel drive is the zero and the four wheel drive is the one. Okay, so I'm just gonna change it to zero and one. So I get to tell it right here. Okay. And you could just leave this way it is where it says at the end and you can show the summary table. I just tend to leave things the way they are if it doesn't bother me. Meaning like it, it I don't care. I'm gonna get like this table, it doesn't matter. If you don't wanna get it, you can deselect it, but it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna click okay. And you're gonna see I'm gonna have a new column show up right here in column seven. And it's, it says recoded two wheel drive, four wheel drive. And right there it is. So you can see all the zeros and ones as you scroll down, okay? Not that I couldn't just type it in myself, there's 13 values, but that's what we have, okay? So now I wanna go ahead and um, take a look at my matrix plot, my correlations, all that stuff. So this is all the same thing as last class. So remember my matrix plots under graph, matrix plot. I'm going to select with groups because I have that categorical predictor there. So that's what lets me separate it by those zeros and ones. So remember here, I'm going to bring in my Y first and then I'm going to bring in all my predictors. And then in the bottom box, I will add that recoded two wheel drive, four wheel drive. So what I want you to know, um, we need to know which one is the Y. Remember, it's the miles per gallon. It was in the problem. So right here, remember, you could always rename it if you want, um, like with a Y, if that's easier for you ahead of time. I'm going to bring in engine, curb, and horsepower. And then down here under the categorical, I'm going to bring in the recoded two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. If you brought in the regular two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, it wouldn't be the end of the world here in this one. It would, it would work all right. I'm not going to do anything in the options. I'm just going to click OK. So here's my matrix plot. Remember, I just look at that upper right. I know if you have a Mac, you can't just tell it upper right. So I'm not gonna tell it to do upper right. So we can all see, um, everyone sees the same thing. So I'm just going to ignore everything down here on the bottom. It's the same graphs, they're just flipped. So it's you don't need to see the same thing twice. So I'm just going to focus up here. And remember what I do is I focus right on this upper um, row. And that's why I put miles per gallon in my Y first, okay? So I wanna see if anything has a strong linear relationship. I really have no idea. I do not see like a real strong linear relationship. And to me, it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe this last one has the strongest. I don't know. They're kind of all over the place. So 
I don't know if it's horsepower or not. <laughs> I have to really get my correlation values to give me a better feeling what's going on. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back to this graph, okay? So remember the correlations, it's always in the same place, right? Since um, simple linear regression. So stat basic, it's the only thing for regression we go under basic for. And down here to correlation. Remember here, I'm going to bring my Y in last and I am not going to include those zeros and ones. So I'm not going to include column seven. So engine weight, curbside, curb, curbside, curb weight, <laughs> horsepower, and then miles per gallon. Okay. I'm gonna click okay. Oops, it's still zoomed in. Remember, I don't care about the graph right there. What I'm looking at is this box right here, the correlation. And what I'm looking at is the bottom row. So, oh, it is horsepower. It's not super strong, but it's stronger than the others. So it's a moderate negative linear relationship. So that's what I would say in my write-up. I would say that um, horsepower and miles per gallon have a negative moderate strength linear relationship, okay, between the two. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go back to my plot and I wanna look at that one plot, that one scattered plot between horsepower and miles per gallon. And I want to see if there's a difference in the colors, okay? I'm gonna go back to my matrix plot, horsepower and miles per gallon, it's the upper right one, all the way over here. I wanna see if there's a difference. There might be, it does kind of appear like the blue is along the top and the red is only down here. So remember the blue was two wheel drive and the one was a four wheel drive. So it does appear that maybe someone that has a two-wheel drive car has, um, you know, better gas mileage than someone with a four-wheel drive. That's what it appears, right? So that's just what I'm seeing. And that's what I'm going to mention in my write-up. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So let's see. So that was getting to know our data, making a note of... Um, you know what we see. So now we want to build our model with the four predictors. So same thing as last class, stat, regression, regression, fit my regression model, miles per gallon here, all of my predictors, engine size, curb, horsepower, oops, not curb twice, horsepower, and my recoded two-wheel, four-wheel drive. Remember, we do not use that bottom box. What happens here if you use that bottom one, you are going to get two different equations for your regression equation, one for the zeros and one for the ones. We don't want that. Okay. All right. So remember, if you're going to get a um, look at a CI, if you're going to uh, look at residual analysis, I need to do things first. You don't have to do it now. You guys, I get so many questions about this, and it's just nice to do it now, right? So I'm going to go into graphs change my residuals from regular to standardized and ask for my residuals versus fits. This is just in case I need residual analysis, my requirements. Then I go under results. I ask for these expanded tables. This is in case I have a CI, okay? Or in case I need a CI. And then storage, I just ask for one of the residuals, residuals or standardized, doesn't matter. So I can run my NPP, all right? So I just get those three things just done. I don't have to go back in and keep asking for it. Although if I'm gonna reduce my model, I may need to do that. So um, sometimes I ask for it now and sometimes I don't, but most of the time I just get it and then if I have it in case I need it. So I'm gonna click okay. So remember when I ask you to build your model, really the equation is the important part for me to see, but sometimes it makes sense just to use this upper drop-down box and copy the whole thing because you're going to use all of this output or almost all of it when you are answering questions. Okay, so here's our model. Let's see. It wants to know if this, like the model of just the linear terms, if it's useful. So if it's useful, then that means that under my ANOVA for my regression row, my F test statistic of 11.12 and my p value of 0.002 would be less than 0.05, and it is. So my model is useful. So that means that at least one of these predictors is useful. So at least one of the predictors has. Um, um, a coefficient that's not zero, if I could say it, <laughs> okay? So that's what we're looking at here. So um, if I'm not asking for a shortened test process and I just ask for a sentence, that's all I want you to say. 
with an F test statistic of 11.12 and a P value of 0 0.002, which is less than 0 0.05, our model is statistically useful. Okay, that's all I'm looking for with that. Now it says to build a better model, I believe. Oh, it wants me to make a note, I forgot. I wanna make a note under my model summary. Look at my S, 0.992, I'm gonna write it down. And my R squared adjusted 77.13. I want them to be better, okay? So I want S to be lower and R squared adjusted to be higher at the end of the day. So at the end of my model building. So that's what it is just for the linear terms. Okay, let's take a look at the model um, with like a better model. So meaning we're going to add some extra terms, maybe quadratic or maybe some interaction. In this one, it asks us to add two interaction terms. So to do this, I'm gonna go right back into my model. So right where I built the model to begin with. So fit my model. And I'm going to leave everything the way it is. I'm going to look here at model. So the model button down here. Okay. I'm gonna click on that. It's going to allow me to add terms. So it wants me to add two interaction terms, one that's curb weight with horsepower and the other one that's engine size with horsepower. So what I need to do is I need to, I need to um, click and highlight engine size and horsepower. So I could just click on it and then hold control and then click on this one and it highlights them both. And it's an interaction term. So it's this top one, interaction term. I don't need to change the order. It's just two and then add, okay. Now it wants me to have curb side or, oh my gosh, curb weight and horsepower, okay? There it is. So my curb weight and horsepower, I'm going to highlight the two. And again, it's an interaction term. So it just means they're multiplying each other. So right here, again, the top. Now, oops. Okay, there, add that. So now we can see them being added. These are all the terms in my model. If I was asked to add like a second order, meaning like an X squared, so maybe it was like an engine size squared, engine size squared, you would just click on engine size and then right here, terms through order, and it would two would mean it's going to square it and I could add it. I, I wasn't asked, I wasn't asked to do that, so I don't really want to do it, but that's what it looks like engine size times engine size. The way to delete this out of your model, see how it's highlighted in the red X here delete it, it just deletes that, okay? The default button just brings it back to my original model that I had built, which was just all the um, first order terms in case you ever need to do that. All right, so I have my two interaction terms added. I'm going to click okay and move forward here, okay? So now I'm going to look at this model and I want to know if it's significant. So I'm going to go back down to my ANOVA again to my regression and I have an F of 8.59 and my P value of 0 0.01. It is significant. I mean, it's useful. I still have a P value that's less than the 0.05. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to build a better model. So to build a better model, I want to take a look and see what p-values I should, or what predictors I should be removing based on the p-value. Let's just take a note and look at the model summary. So my S is 0.94. It was 0.99 before, okay? And my R squared adjusted is 79. It was 77. So this is good. So this means just adding those terms have made the model better, okay? So that's how we know if it's better. By looking at the S, we want it to decrease and the R squared adjusted to increase, all right? So let's take a look at what we should remove. I'm gonna go up here to my coefficients section. I'm going to just skim down this p-value column right here. And I want to look for the largest one. Remember the constant doesn't make a difference to us. So that one you just ignore but I'm going to look at all the predictors here and I want to look for the largest P value. So it looks like this one at 0.366. So that's just the horsepower, okay? So it's, it's saying the horsepower is the largest 
p-value and I want to remove it. But remember, I can only remove a linear term if it is not part of an interaction or quadratic term. Look at my, my interaction terms. They're both involve horsepower. So I cannot remove that linear term of horsepower. So if I can't remove it, I'm gonna go on to the next one. So I wanna look for the next largest p-value. So looking at the next largest p-value, it looks like it's curb weight, right? 0.233. Again, it is part of my interaction term. I cannot remove that linear term. So now I need to go to the next one. So that looks like it's engine size at 0.229. Again, it is part of my interaction terms. So I can't remove it. I just, I cannot do it. So now I need to go and look for the next one. It looks like the next is 0.221. That's one of the interaction terms we added. We're going to remove that one because it doesn't matter the interaction or quadratic term you can remove. It's just those linear ones you cannot remove without, um, if it's included in one of the interaction or quadratic terms. So curb weight times horsepower, I'm going to remove. So the way to remove it, we're gonna go back into our model and we'll, we will actually remove it where we added it. So stat regression, regression, fit my model. I'm gonna go to model. And it was the curb weight, I believe in horsepower. Yep, this one. So I'm gonna click on it and then hit the red X up here to delete it. You'll see it gets removed. I'm going to run my model. So click OK. You can only do one term at a time because you'll see the p-values will change. Okay, so you don't want to just remove like three terms all of a sudden because they're, they're not significant. It does not work that way. Okay, you won't have the right model in the end. So one at a time. So now I'm going to run my model again. Okay, is the model useful? So yes, 0 0.006, it's better than what it was. So that's good. Although my S has now increased and my R squared adjusted has now decreased, but I'm just viewing that. I'm not gonna write it down or anything because I wanna see what else I can remove. So again, my coefficients box, look at my p-values. So the largest one is this 0.729, which is curb weight. And I don't see anything attached to curb weight, right? There's no interaction term now. I'm going to remove that one. So that one is not a good predictor. It's not significant for our model. So go back in to stat, regression, regression, fit the model, and go into model here. And I'm going to remove just curve weight. Click on that, click on the red X. Click OK, place. Here's my model again. Again, I'm just gonna look, okay. My model's still useful, that's good. That's a good sign, I'm just checking it. You don't have to like write that down or anything. I'm just checking to make sure it's good. But what I really need to do is just look at this coefficient box in the p-values and, and make sure all of these are less than 0.15. So here, engine size is 0.6, that, that isn't good, but I can't remove it because it's part of my interaction term. And the next highest is the interaction term. So I'm actually going to remove it. So I'm going to remove engine size times horsepower. So it's the next largest p-value. Stat, regression, regression. Go into my model, remove this interaction term by clicking on it and then clicking the red X and then OK twice. So now I'm going to look at my coefficients and look at my p-values they're all less than 0.15. That means they're all significant. So that means engine size, horsepower, and the two-wheel, four-wheel drive that's recoded, those are all significant predictors for my miles per gallon. I'm so now I'm gonna go back down here, take a look at my ANOVA. My F is 16.68, uh, my P value is 0.001. It's definitely less than 0.05, so it's a good thing, right? It's, you could see that that has gotten smaller. All of my uh, values are less than 0.15, like we talked about. Remember, we changed it to 0.15 just for the model building. My S, look at this, has decreased. It was 0.99 originally. It's 0.93. That's good. R squared is better because it's 79.67. It was 77. So that's a good thing. So my model is better. I built a better model for predicting that miles per gallon. All right. I have a quick question. Yeah. 
Um, are you gonna give us the alpha or is it always just automatically gonna be 0.15? Okay, so when you're testing for significance, it's 0 0.05, like when you're looking at your F test statistic and that p-value, right? And for the model building, it will always be 0.15. So I won't give it to you. Just know it's always 0.15 when you're looking to see if they're all significant, right? These all arcs are all less than 15%. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so that's how we reduce our model. So now when I say I want you to give me your final model, this is what I mean. I want you to give me your final model. So you just put all your output when I ask for your final model. Okay. Now I want to show you how Minitab can do this for me. Now that seemed like a pain, like going back and forth, but just know like it's really long when I'm talking and showing it to you. And it's a lot quicker when you're just doing it on your own. And just, right, you're not really doing a write-up. You're just keep looking and building, building a model again. So I want to go back and I want to show you how many tab, tab can do this for me. So when I go here, remember what we had for our model, our original model, I'm going to default because that will br bring me all of these linears. Then we had the two interaction terms. So I want to do that, add those, okay? I'm gonna click okay. So I have all my interaction terms in there that I, that I wanted originally for that model too. So if you want Minitab to do the process for you, we can go to stepwise button up here. And when we click on this, I'm going to tell Minitab to, to do the backwards elimination. You can see there's other methods, but we do the backwards here. That's all we're talking about, backwards elimination. I'm going to change my alpha to 0.15. So that's important because it's just set at 10%, 0.1. I want it 15%, 0.15. And I'm going to ask Minitab to provide the details for each step right down here on the bottom. And this will show me like a table for each step. It will say step one, step two, step three. And you can see what term was removed when. And that's nice because that's what you're doing when you do it yourself. Okay. So I'm going to go down here, click OK. And then click OK again. And so this is my output. So this is the detail I'm saying. So we can see step one here. Right. And this is my model right here. This is my model with all my terms. Then step two, look at what's missing down here at the bottom. You could see it took out that curb weight and horsepower. Okay. Then step three occurred and you can see now it's taken out this curb weight. I mean, it's what we did, right? And then I don't know why it doesn't go over it on the screen to the right more, but it, it kind of comes down here and curves around. And then you can see it takes out this other interaction term, engine size and horsepower. So we can see what took place and how many steps it took to remove the model, like the terms. And then right here, it gives you your final model. And you can see it's the same as what we just did. Okay, so feel free to try that out. But on today's daily, I want you to do it by hand and see how to do it individually. And then at the end, I will ask you to do it this way and have Minitab do it for you. And I just want you to check to make sure it's the same because it should be the same.